Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is John Dwanopoulos, and today I'd like to give you a very brief uh, introduction to the Army's Institute for Solar Nanotechnologies at MIT, as well as discuss some of our uh, types of metrics that we use. Our goal is to uh, work with our Army science uh, and technology colleagues to try and dramatically improve the survivability and capabilities of the solar platforms by exploring and extending the frontiers of nanotechnology and doing this through fundamental research, but even more importantly, or equally importantly, engaging in uh, transition. Now the ISN is actually a three member team. There's a facility on campus with all of these associated personnel. The second component involves our industry partner, partners and other industry and organizations with whom we interact closely who help in doing uh, transitioning. And the third component are our colleagues, scientists and engineers at the Army and Science and Technology Labs and Centers. And we have uh, a large number of uh, collaborations with all of these labs and centers shown here. Now our research is organized in the following way. We have 16 core basic research projects and they're organized in terms of three strategic research areas, soldier protection, battlefield care, sensing, uh, augmenting situational awareness, and the third is transformational nano optoelectronic soldier capabilities. Now, the applications and transitions that emerge from this basic research are all aligned to the Army Futures Command, what are known as cross functional teams. And they're shown here uh, in blue from number one uh, to number six. And underneath each one of these are the titles of the uh, applications that have come out of the uh, basic research that apply to each one of these. Uh, each one of these teams. I'm not going to go uh, into details or discuss any of this. I'm going to just leaving it here for the record. And if there's any interest during the discussion, we can come back to this slide. But the most important aspect, I guess, to today's discussion are what is uh, you know our metrics? How do we measure uh, impact assessment? And we do so in these four ways here. Obviously, publications, both in terms of quality and number, uh, patents and licenses are very important. Uh, transitions in general are key importance and STEM uh, training in general is, is, uh, is very important but in particular STEM training uh, to DOD is something that we try and do as much as possible. So what I'd like to do uh, today is basically focus and show you some examples of these transitions and also show you uh, what we've done in terms of STEM training uh, to DOD. So we begin with uh, transitions. So here I'm going to be showing you a sample of ISN major technology transitions, at least what we believe are major transitions. Uh, I'm going to be showing 15 of them. It's just a sampling. We have more. And the color, here's how I'm going to be presenting. And the color coding here is very important. So look up here at the key. Whenever you see red text, that corresponds to the basic research that led to the transitioning. Uh, green text corresponds to the company or organization to which this uh, research was transitioned. So in this particular case, it'd be FLIR Corp. And if there's a product uh, that is being sold or developed, uh, that's in dark blue. And in this particular case, it's the fighter detector. So what we have uh, for number one here is a discovery of nanostructured amplifying fluorescent polymers for uh, ultra-sensitive explosive detection. And these types of devices that are based on this have been deployed in, uh, in Iraq, Afghanistan, and some US airports. Next, a discovery of hollow core cylindrical photonic crystal fiber for guiding high power CO2 laser light uh, through air. This is something that was thought to be impossible using dielectric materials. Basically, this leads to a new type of endoscopic uh, surgery. And there have been over 250,000 procedures across 1,000 VA and civilian hospitals in the US using this approach. The development of novel nanostructured photonic crystal light emitting diodes for high power lighting. And these are currently used now in numerous products in general lighting, projectors, transportation, and entertainment. The discovery of thermodynamically stable and nanostructured aluminum alloy coatings. And this is arguably actually a new state of matter, which uh, provides high performance coatings for increased protection from wear and corrosion. And doing this actually with the strength of steel, but with the weight of aluminum. Development of uh, spray-assisted layer-by-layer uh, thin film conformal coating technology. Uh, this is applied for a variety of different types of material, a variety of different uh, applications for coatings. Actually, the technology here was acquired very quickly by uh, 3M. 
the development of novel nanostructure constructs for highly potent drug delivery, basically having synthetic vaccines with unprecedented immune response, three orders of magnitude increase in efficacy. Uh, for example, uh, this shows that you have two orders of magnitude less antigen that you need, going from 1,000 to 10, and again, paradoxically, an order of magnitude increase in immune, uh, in immune response. And this is for a uh, murine model uh, for malaria. The development of uh, novel quantum dot LEDs with uh, very pure, basically red, green, and uh, blue light. Um, and these are being used now for, for basically uh, large screen uh, uh, TVs, uh, PCs, workstations, et cetera. And this technology actually was recently acquired by Samsung. The discovery of unique nanoscale super elastic metal alloy materials with order magnitude improvement in high strain uh, output for actuation, providing very high performing but inexpensive shape memory alloys for military equipment, cables, devices, and industrial actu actuators. The development and drawing of novel multi-material, multifunctional fiber devices. This is really a very important and big transition, which was the basis of a multi-million dollar manufacturing you know, innovation institute uh, called FOA, or Advanced Functional Fabrics of America. Another important transition from these types of novel fibers uh, was the development of, of acoustic transduction uh, fibers, which were transitioned to JAXA and NASA for deployment to the uh, International Space Station. Uh, and the use for these fibers would be uh, to help collect data on cosmic uh, particle impacts in space. And actually here is um, uh, what the fabric looks like when it just was brought up. This is a picture actually from two months ago. And this is a project that's gonna be going on for about two years. The discovery of novel nanocrystal and refractory metal alloys of extraordinary strength and toughness and this company's using this for a variety of applications, but here I'm gonna focus uh, just on a couple. Uh, the replacement of deployment, uh, depleted uranium kinetic penetrators, but also paradoxically uh, for light weighting applications for a variety of vehicle components, but also very importantly, at least for the military, vehicle armor with stopping power of high strength steel, but approximately one third of the weight. You can imagine how important that could be. The development of unique coating technology incorporating drugs into a thin a multi-layer film basically for novel wound healing uh, coatings that can deliver their therapeutic uh, payload sequentially, uh, thereby accelerating hemostasis and improved uh, healing. The development of advanced optical nanomaterials uh, for transparent displays, uh, which have very high resolution and are very bright. Uh, and this high resolution and bright brightness occurs over the entire 360 degree uh, viewing angle. The development of novel polymer vapor deposition uh, processing. This is for creating coatings for hermetic packaging, say of high frequency RF and microwave devices without the need for uh, high temperature operations or dealing with uh, harsh solvents or processing uh, conditions. The discovery of, unique, of a unique photonic crystal design of photonic states uh, that can lead to tailoring of the frequency distribution of thermal radiation, basically uh, for the first time enabling efficient thermal photovoltaics. And the company is uh, working on creating uh, compact uh, generators which can yield over 1700 watt hours per kilogram, providing 50 watts continuously for 72 hours at a total weight of only six pounds, as compared to say lithium ion batteries, which will require 40 pounds to do the same thing. And finally, the direct transition of ISM research and technology to startup companies. Uh, we've had 38 startup companies since the inception of the ISN, and I'm very happy to say uh, 28 are still uh, successful. Next, I want to talk about ISN trained personnel to DOD. Over the past 17 years, we actually we've managed to get uh, 21 uh, uh, personnel to, uh, to the DOD. Here are all the details. Again, uh, this is just uh, for the record. And finally, uh, as a summary, uh, I want to mention that the ISN really is a part of a team of teams. It is a synergistic collaboration with Army colleagues and industry partners to explore nanotechnology as the foundation 
for enabling and applying novel and potentially revolutionary micro, meso, and macro technologies in order to increase the survivability and mission capabilities of the soldier and platforms. And one of the beauties of uh, the work that we do is that it also, there are lots of dual use applications as um, I think you saw in some of the uh, transitions. Thank you very much.